Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good night. My name is Isaac Sabria, project engineer for the powertrain integration team inside Aplus Ideada. Today, I will show you an overview of the first step while defining a new vehicle concept, especially oriented to a mobility business model. You will see uh, how to define the vehicle targets that come out from the business model, an example of business model as a resource as ideal collaboration, use case identification, how to define vehicle targets, the competitors, important step in order to position the new product, and finally, an example of vehicle target setting. If you have any questions, please write them to the question and answer chat, and at the end of the presentation, I will answer them. Okay, so let's start. Business model impact on target setting. The value of an idea lies in the using of it. So let's start our new business. For the business model, it's important uh, to answer four important questions. What, why, who, and how. In order to achieve the value proposition, the revenue model, and the value chain. So starting our business. Your business model must have a clear value proposition by answering the question, what I want to sell and what kind of service I want to offer that is not available in the market, or my idea will be different, innovative, fresh, or dis disruptive. For example, provide a new service of car sharing, but not only a car to go from A to B. For example, providing a, a car, for example, for a, a little car sharing, sports cars for a, a sportive day in, in a circuit, or a cargo van for a different uh, work purposes. So, uh, or develop uh, new ways to share vehicles addressed to a single user, like a scooter, like an electric motorbike or bicycle, or it's not necessary to own a specific fleet or vehicles. Maybe your business model can be setting an application that connect vehicle owners with potential client that uh, needs a vehicle for a moment. Next question will be, who will be our potential clients? Or who will deliver the services? Who will service our products? Once uh, these uh, two questions are clear, we are the first step to define the target setting of the vehicles of the service. Then we have to answer the question, why? Why is important? Why is important uh, this? Um, why is important to deliver the service? Um, who will service our products? Then we have to ask. Um, want to develop this idea? The reason that why idea is better than the actual options of the market. Uh, the, the reasons we wanted to satisfy the needs, and finally, how how we implement our idea? The time needed, the infrastructure, the legal requirements, the human resources, and the economic plan. Here, uh, we can show an example of target setting uh, consideration, considerations for the, for the transport electrification. In this case, is an example of, or, uh, of the case for the bus fleet operator. Here, uh, for the economic side, we have to, to find a balance between our desired vehicle range and the electric infrastructure to charge the vehicles. It's not suitable to have a charger on each corner in terms of investment and trip scheduling. Then looking for the, the technical side, it's important to define the real needs that I want to supply and choose or define the correct vehicle specifications. Also, this product must apply for the safety requirements and the reliability. Here on the bottom, uh, there is a summary of the development of a tool to help a bus fleet operators to connect the balance, sorry, to consider the balance between the city needs and the investment required to satisfy these needs. This project was a confounded project from the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, AIT. So to develop the tool, an analysis of, an analysis of the environment was held 
to analyze the, the city requirements, the conditions, the characteristics. Then, some tests were performed in order to have real information and develop a simulation model with the objective to study the performance and the efficiency of the lines exploited. And in this loop, an economical point of view was added. This was the process of developing the decision support tool that uh, is represented in DST. The results of the tool helps to the translation of socioeconomic need in the technical requirements, assessing technology sustainability, helps to tiers to define their expenditures and ensure the efficiency of the investment. So now let's talk about the decision support tool. Here is an example of the business model developed during the project. To have a context, uh, this project uh, uh, has um, record, record information from different European cities. But in this example, we will center in Barcelona city. Barcelona has a population of 1.6 million people and its area is about more than 100 square kilometer. But the problem of the Barcelona is the, is the area of influence. This area of influence is about 3.2 million people and this area length about more than 600 square kilometers. So here we can see a lot of people that a lot of potential people to go to Barcelona to have a different reasons. The reasons can be work reasons, that is um, the, main, the main reason, healthcare, culture, etc. So, how to get to Barcelona? Barcelona, we have three, three ways to get in Barcelona. By land, with private vehicle, by bus, by train, we have private transport, public transport. We can get Barcelona by air, with passenger airlines, by private jets, or like aircraft or by sea, with crews, with yaks or sailboats. So here I can, I can show you an example of a study of the migration that uh, occurs with for the worker people. Here is, uh, I will show an example of, of the Spain, uh, Spain mobility. Okay, this is a, an expected mobility during the 2019 year. And here we can see Barcelona. So a lot of people are going to Barcelona and few people are moving from Barcelona to the other areas. So this study was an example of the, the mobility between uh, different uh, country sites of one region. Okay, so we wanted to study our problematic that was the, the how people can move uh, inside, the, inside Barcelona. Inside Barcelona, we can see people that can move with public transport or private transport. So, but we want to to um, move people to to take the public transport to move inside the city and, and increase the, 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 the environment the, the environment parameters. So, for example, um, how we can move inside Barcelona? Barcelona have multiple transports. For example, here we can see the, the underground, the underground uh, network. The underground has uh, eight lines, 165 stations, and 162 vehicles. Or for example, we can move uh, by, uh, through Barcelona by trolley that has six lines, 55 stations, and 42 vehicles. Other option that is more sustainable and, uh, and Theodore's free ride is moving by bicycle. Barcelona has a public service called Basing. This is a bike, bike rental and the user buys a subscription and with it, that subscription is allowed to take one of the more than 7,000 bikes that are available and are, they are distributed through the uh, Basing network. This Basing network has more than uh, 500 service points. But in our case, we want to center to the, to the bus programmatic, to the public bus lines. And in this case, the public transport or the public uh, network, uh, Barcelona's bus, uh, bus network, sorry. 
So if we analyze this, this network, we can see that there are more than 800 kilometers of line services. And inside these, these line services, there are more than 200 kilometers that they're only allowed to circulate with, with the bus. With a bus. Um, here's the other two examples. Here's the, 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 the most ancient or most popular lines that they are going through through Barcelona. And then a few years ago, uh, Barcelona, uh, the TMB, developed uh, an, another type of, of network that was, was, was more direct. So not only uh, was the first lines were more labyrinthic, and so these new lines were more directly. So they're horizontal lines, vertical lines, and diagonal lines to have more uh, quick connections between the different transport connections. So if we analyze how many people uh, took this, this type of transport during the previous years, we can see that uh, on year 2019, previously from the COVID, more than 200 million people move, by, move in Barcelona by private transport. So this is a, a huge moon of people, and this is a problem to develop a new line or new services. So if, although if we assume that we want to electrify these lines, it's not easy. So to electrify these lines, we have to uh, ask some questions and we have to find this, the, the answer to these questions. So for deploying a new line, we have to, to ask how many vehicles I need, how to electrify a new line, how to define a new line, the charging schema, I want to, to charge my vehicles uh, on the bus depot, I want to charge my vehicles uh, with an opportunity charging, I want to share the charging points, how many charges I need, and for uh, the fleet operators, the most important question is that the investment, how much money I need to deploy uh, at this, bus, this electrified bus line. So, uh, in collaboration with, with uh, some fleet operators and some universities, we develop uh, uh, the decision support tool. This tool is a web service tool that helps the operators to define new strategies on an online electrification and helps to have a more efficiency investments. The advantages of, of this tool, for example, is that with a very few steps, we can define a new strategy or we can define uh, a new investment. Um, what, what are these, these, these main inputs? These main inputs are uh, selecting the, the route with uh, the route parameterization. Here the user have to add some characteristics of the route, like the length, the number of stops, uh, if it's a circular, and then how, how, many, how many people takes this line and the, um, the proportion of people uh, during the different uh, time schedule of the vehicle service. Then the, um, the, the operator can, can update their, their, their fleet, their, their vehicles. So if, the, um, if, if it has uh, a specific vehicle characteristics, it, he, uh, it can update these characteristics on, on the platform. And then uh, the, the one of the last important steps is the my cost. So this the, this cost is very important for for the for the, an investment. So you uh, sub operators has the um, a specific cost that it can introduce through the tool. And after introducing of or of of this data, the tool uh, returns uh, three important answers. So how many vehicles I need how many charges I need, and how much it will cost to me. So, for example, I, I can show the, the tool. This is the, the actual tool. The actual tool is a web services tool, so it's uh, so easy to, to use. For example, at, at the home page, we can see the, a summary of a previous simulation results. Here, in the, the specific tab of my simulations, there are different uh, previous simulations performed. 
the my routes is a de database with the previous routes introduced. Here we can see some parameters that the, the tool asks to the, to the operator. So it's easy to up, upload uh, the, the data because it's a guide process. And then the my fleet, in this case, the, the tool offers by default uh, four different buses because there are some some parameters that maybe it's not known at, at the moment for the for the study. So the tool offers uh, an, a standard or more or less the the average values of a, a standard bus, and then the the, the specific cost. So uh, for example, if we can see after two performing a simulation, we can see the the results. In this case, the the tool can simulate two different situations, the charging schemas or the opportunity charging. So the tool is very versatile and can give a lot, a lot, a lot of information with a few time. And then uh, with the, the result, we, we can print the results by a, P, uh, a PDF uh, file. Okay. So this is an, an example of, of, a, of a business. This, in this case, is a is a is a service, is a web service that uh, helps the the fleet operators to take a decision. Okay, once we have uh, defined our our business model, we have to to get deep on how um, in in which ways or in which ambients we will move our, our business. Okay, so now we can we are going to see the use case identification and the acquisition. So three steps. We have the we have defined our product. So the, the we find the product or the service is, is defined. We have um, the purpose of our product and service. Um, what what we want to to sell or what we want to to deliver. And for example, if we have a, a goods delivery or car sharing, now we have to define the area of services or we define the, the route, the route or the, the areas that our services will be, will be participating. For example, if we take um, a car sharing scenario, we need an infrastructure to recharge our fleet or uh, maybe if we are uh, charging, or maybe we can provide car sharing services, or we can provide charging infrastructure services. So we need to define the areas of action. In this case, we have to define the, the charging network for an urban area in order to satisfy the different users. So if we move inside a city, it's it's good that to have a lot of chargers that uh, we have a lot of users that they can move around the city without branch and shady. So it's important. Once we have defined the network, the network we have to define the, the charger, the, how many charger. We, if we have a, an, a charging area with a lot of slots, we have only one slot available. And finally, it depends on our services. If we are a fleet operator or a car sharing operator, maybe we can assume that all our vehicles will charge with a, with the same charger. But if we provide these services to a different type of vehicles, this type of vehicles maybe will be used at different charger types. So we have to define how many connectors we will need. This is for for, uh, for the network. If we, for example, if we take the, the if we take the, the example of a charging network, but for example, if our vehicle move uh, in different scenarios, we have to limit or define different scenarios that that the vehicle have to to move, and the user have to to experience a good feeling with our vehicle in the different limited areas. In this case, for example. Uh, we have um, four different ambients. For example, with uh, an urban area. Uh, after to introduce this this uh, this slide, the root parameters uh, are very important because in this in this in this step, uh, we are also um, re uh, we have writing our target setting of our final vehicle. 
So it's important to make clear which is the, the expected scenario that the, the user will use the, a vehicle. And these different areas will define different targets. For example, if we move, if we move in an urban area, uh, we expect that the vehicle uh, will the maximum speed is not a very important target. So uh, developing a vehicle with a slower speed, it's perfectly it's a, it's perfectly according to, to the density and the, um, the battery capacity is not, has not to be very very high. But also if we move to an extra urban area, here we have to think with a vehicle that uh, have to that the speed must be according to these roads and the battery capacity must be according to the, the specific distance. So we have to to think that the, the user expects to have uh, to use a vehicle during all day without without charging. But maybe if we we if we move we move to a rural area, we can see irregular roads. So we have to to a target of a motor performance and also a battery performance. And finally, if our user wants to go and in an off-road area, here uh, we, we assume that uh, the vehicle have to have to have a lot of different performance, such as uh, the, the capacity to go uh, to a high to um, that can perform uh, higher slopes that have. Uh, a battery capacity that that has an or that can fit during this this uh, high slope uh, superations and uh, motor capacities etc. So um, it's important to define these um, these lines these routes. For that, it's recommended to first of all the first of all defi define a route, then has uh, had a, a route acquisition. Route acquisition can, can be performed uh, using GPS or performing or used by different uh, mobile applications. But uh, here's a warning about this: using these mobile applications related to to the um, to the efficiency or to the precision of of the data. Mm, this uh, these records. Uh, um, Mass uh, has an a post process um, a post processing uh, procedure in order to to check that the, the recording is is, val is valid is 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 okay and is there is no uh, misinformation due to the to the loss of connection between the, the GPS satellites or with a mobile mobile network etc. So with analyzing the, the, the record, uh, this, this recording, we can see the, the speed profile. So we can we can have the maximum speed, the, the average speed. With the height, we can assume uh, if the route is, is flat, is a sportive route. And then we, we can define the, the length because maybe we have a, a circular route. We have to define the length and the length uh, will define the, the vehicle range. So now I will propose you an, an activity and at the final of the session we can discuss. Imagine uh, that you are planning a deployment of an automatic warehouse and you are the responsible of the ro robot deployment. So think about the, this, the, this use case. You can think about the, the autonomy, the charging schema, the operation hours. So this is an, an, an example. This is a, an, an, an abstraction example. So if you want to take a couple of minutes to think these, these parameters, the autonomy, charging schema, and the operation hours. Okay. Now I will show you a use case example. This is a personal baseline electrification. Um, 
This is an example from another project. And the objective was to develop an electric minibus for Barcelona city. So in this case, the, the bus operator wanted to electrify one, one line. And this operator uh, gave us uh, some uh, specifications. Uh, one of them was the, the desired lines that it wanted to cover with this, this new vehicle. So our first step was to record the, the actual line. So uh, we instrumented a vehicle and we record, we record the, the operation. How? Um, why? Because we wanted to know the real traction requirements of the vehicle. In this case, we were interested uh, in the average speed and the average slope of the, of the route in order to know the requirements of the traction power. Um, in this case, uh, we can see that um, this is an example of, of uh, this line in Barcelona. So we have the, the record, the, the, the speed profile, and the height profile. But this profile is not is a very has a lot of, of um, change. Have some some points that the the, the change of, of slope is abrupt. So. It's important to have a, a check with a, uh, with a, another application. In this case, uh, it's possible to, to compare the, the slope with, a, with another tool. In this case, I can show an example of, of the Google Earth. So here, uh, manually or with the, the data from the um, manually or with the data from the, the record thing, the, the record instrumentation because in this case we use a, a, a GPS uh, you can you can define the, the line the, the route and then it's easy to see the the, the height profile and compare this this profile with, with the record one and it's possible to to check or to post process and to uh, redefine the height profile. For us, uh, it's, it's important because, as, as, as I mentioned, it the objective is to is to calculate the traction requirements and then translate this, these requirements to the component to the component selection. But here we have another problem that uh, the fit operator want, wanted to use the same vehicle with another line. So okay, so we have to to take uh, two different records. We have to analyze the different situations and define the, the the worst case in order to fulfill the requirements of both lines. Okay, so at this point, we compare the real route profile with the reference route for the bus homologation. That is that cycle. The cycle is called sort. Comparing both both cycles, we notice that the sort cycle has a high average speed compared with the user cycle, and the acceleration profile was a bit different. So what happened? We notice that the, the sort cycle appears to be more aggressive related to the driving profile, but we were afraid about auxiliary consumption. So we analyze this, this source cycle and we propose another cycle that fulfills the real vehicle needs. Inside the other, we post-process the original route. We create a route that agrees with the hypothetical real use, adjusting uh, to the op or operative time. Also, we took into account the influence of the slope uh, during the route. With all these, these parameters, we created a stochastic model based on Markov method of prediction, and we obtained a reduced cycle that was easily reproducible and fitted with the original root parameters. For example, we fit it with the, the acceleration distribution. The result was the creation of a synthetic uh, representative cycle that was adjusted to the uh, to the average uh, speed and the average acceleration. 
Also, this cycle was validated through simulation tools. The simulation tools will be presented on, on the next uh, workshop performed tomorrow with the, the sizing tool. Um, through the simulation tools, we validated the, this, this new cycle. So we compare the results from both cycles. It's important to remark that uh, this synthetic uh, cycle uh, used both both uh, both cycles, both reference user user cycles. So we take the the worst case in order to develop this synthetic cycle. So here um, you can see that that the the average consumption in both cycles is similar, but analyzing um, or Dividing the consumption for the different vehicle parts, we can see that uh, with using the source cycle, uh, the average consumption in acceleration is higher, and the um, the capacity of regeneration also is higher. So, so uh, um, using the, the source cycle, we expect to have more energy, or we have a uh, we have um, yeah the, the 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 amount of energy to to recover can be higher than than the real or than the, the expected. Okay, so um, what I mean is that the, the the synthetic cycle that we adjusted to the average speed and average acceleration. Was uh, most uh, more uh, was most useful in order to define the, the battery size because we the, um, the vehicle developed fitted to the to the, these re real re requirements. So we we help to improve the some areas of the vehicle, such as the battery packaging, because we can we can use uh, a small uh, small batteries, or we can help to improve the, the vehicle performance, such as uh, speed, acceleration, etc. Once we have the, the use case defined, we can we can pass to the definition of the vehicle targets. So at this point, we have defined our service, we have defined our use case, but we have to define our vehicle. So let's take an example. This is an example of a, of a bicycle. So we wanted to develop a new bicycle, but this bicycle is an electric vehicle. So we have to decide the battery size. Have to be bigger, or smaller. We want to. We wanted a vehicle that um, full electric, a full electric bicycle, a hybrid bicycle. We have to think. We have to think on on this target. Then the traction system. Also, we we are moving on a full electric bicycle. Or we are moving through a, a vehicle that helps to the human traction. But, but if we have to the human traction, we have to define the, um, the transmission, the, the gear relation. Also, we have to define the wheel size. We wanted a big wheels, a small wheels. We wanted a big wheels because they are cooler than uh, small wheels. Or we wanted to develop a small bicycle with a small wheels to adjust to a different uh, using uh, situations. The design we wanted a, a complete bicycle. We wanted a bicycle that, that can be that can be packaged or can be transferred in a, a smaller for the public transport. Connectivity. Um, or actually, all the vehicles are connected, but bikes. We can develop uh, connectivity with with with, uh, with our bikes, or then other design or other design targets that we wanted to introduce to this to this type of vehicle. Also, to define some some targets of the vehicle, for example, the battery and the traction system, we have to think in the use case. Uh, for example, here. We have the same uh, four situations uh, seen before. For example, for ur urban environment, the slope, we have to think about the, this urban slope. If the city is flat, there is no problem. But if the city has some, some different uh, slopes, we have to 
the, um, to think about uh, to have a, a motor that can fulfill the different requirements and also uh, if we have moving on with a higher slope we have we will have a more uh, battery demand and usually in this case the the bicycle have to be simply because the, uh, here the user will be not a uh, experienced user but if we move to an extra urban maybe here the slopes will be more more flat but here we want it a high range from from the battery and maybe if we on if we go to an open road the user will be experienced so we have to be more technical or maybe we we can have a rural rural situation at some different slopes we have more performance because it's not not flat the the, the friction coefficient is different so the user have to do more more power in order to uh, to drive from, from to the to the different to different roads, the user can be experienced and experience, or maybe we can develop a bicycle for off-road purposes. So here we have a high-performance uh, vehicle with a experienced or not experienced user. So it's important uh, to fit uh, the use case, um, the use case, the, the use case situations to the final vehicle uh, targets. For example, if we take um, these two types of vehicles, the targets will be different. For example, we, if we take a, if, if we take a small car, we have to think with a with a vehicle range. So if the range, so, so if the vehicle will move in a, in inside an urban area. So the range it's not, has not to be very high. Maybe uh, with a, a low range, it's acceptable. But we have to perform auto thing with the, the 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 charge schema, maximum speed. If also we move in a in a urban amb ambient, the maximum speed can be low. But if the user wants to go outside the city, we have to think with a vehicle that with a higher speed. The, also the slope, the slope, the slope superation. Um, if we move inside the city that has uh, higher slopes, we have to prepare the vehicle that uh, is able to go through the higher slopes. Or if not, we have to advise the user that uh, and try to avoid these uh, different challenge situations. And then the connectivity. So we have to prepare the vehicle, we have to prepare the, the battery, and assume that there will be a lot of uh, auxiliaries, electrical auxiliaries that we have to, to fit with, with the battery. But these targets can be different if we move, if we change the vehicle type. For example, uh, uh, we can, if, we tank, if we take cargo van, uh, we have to think uh, again with, with a vehicle range. So we have urban, extra urban. Here we have to think with a cargo capacity. So um if uh, this, the purpose of this vehicle is for the last mile delivery battery capacity can can be can be low but if we move between parcels we have to think with a, a high battery capacity also the slopes and then uh, take special attention to the auxiliaries if we have um, a climatic uh, vehicle we have to think how much energy will consume the, the freezer. And then the, the, the different auxiliaries, uh, in case the small auxiliaries like the mobiles, likes, etc. So uh, a summary of the definition of, of vehicle targets, it's important to know to define the vehicle purpose, define the vehicle capacity, if uh, for people or, or goods, the vehicle range, um, the, the distance, how, how how much distance I want, or I want to, uh, how much distance my vehicle we uh, have able to to perform. Then the vehicle performance, so the maximum speed, the, the acceleration time from null to 100 kilometers per hour, or maybe from null to the maximum speed in case it is lower than 100 kilometers, and the climbability if required. And then take in, in take into account the electrical auxiliaries. Okay, so now 
we think about the, the use case, uh, we thought about the, the, the vehicle targets, and an important step is uh, to see, to have a look to the competitors, to have a, to take time and analyze the, the actual market and, and realize a benchmark activity. So, in this benchmark, it's important to identify the, the clue parameters of the, marker, of, of the market and know our product differences from the actual market. And if it's, it's nice, it will be perfect if we can introduce some improvements to, the, to this objective market. So, for example, here we have a, a, a representation, a statute, and there are differences, but we have to, to develop a product that is better or it is equal to the market or to the objective market. But um, in this new business, it's nice if we, if we introduce new things or new settings that there's there there is, that for the moment there they um, they're not not exist. For example. Uh, in this case, we have uh, again the, the bicycle. If we want to sell a bicycle, we have to identify all the advantages of our product or services. For example, in this example, the bicycle for urban mobility is an excellent vehicle and has a lot of uh, advantages respecting the other uh, mo uh, mobility vehicles. For example, we have an electric bike, but uh, there is no range anxiety because uh, if, if I, I, uh, I don't have the, the electrical part or the electrical traction, I can also use the mechanic traction. But for example, using um, a scooters or electric motorbikes or, or electric car, it's not possible. If I have no battery, I have no, no vehicle. And then it's easy, it's easy to park. Uh, in some public requirements, we can offer a dedicated space uh, for to, to park our vehicles. Not the same for, for the motorbikes or, or for the cars. Um, no license, uh, no taxes, no office, low maintenance, low maintenance. So the bike is a perfect, it's a, it's a, um, the most suitable uh, vehicle to move inside the city. So they are all advantages. So this is so there is a big market, there are great opportunities. So that it means that a lot of competitors uh, in this market. So we have to analyze the the, the other type of vehicles and the, the technical specifications of the vehicles. Taking again the example of the, the small urban vehicle and the cargo van, we can see here uh, two examples. Uh, okay, for example, taking uh, a vehicle here, there is a, a small urban vehicle, this is an electric vehicle, and here we can see uh, different specifications. So this, these are the specifications that we have to take into account to develop our, our new product. For example, here we can see the, the range. In this case, calculated uh, through an EDC cycle. Here, the, the claim range is uh, 93 miles. So this, this is about uh, 150 kilometers. Maximum speed, 80 miles per hour. That's uh, around 130 kilometers per hour. And the acceleration time, the null to 100 kilometers per hour, that it's about uh, 16 seconds. So this is the, the a reference or baseline for for a urban electric vehicle. But if we move to a to a van, and in this case a, a Piaggio Porter, here the first of all we can see that. Um, the brand offers different configurations. So this is um, a point to have in, to take into account and to offer a similar product or a product that can fit all possible um, client uh, client demand. So we have uh, the van, uh, a pickup, pickup with other hydraulic systems. 
Um, also, we can see the, the technical aspects, the, the performance. Here we can see the max speed is, is, is very slow speed, 55 kilometers per hour, and the range is uh, up to 110 kilometers, 10 kilometers. So this is clearly um, a vehicle developed for urban purpose. For example, the, the battery is uh, 17 kilowatts per hour, so it's not it's not a very big battery. Also, here we have um, an, an important data: the maximum gradient fully loaded. So this is the maximum slope that the vehicle can go through, and this is set up to 18 18 percent. And then um, is an, an anecdote: the the load capacity for the for the different uh, vehicle configurations that. They start uh, from 430 kilograms up to uh, 520 kilograms. So this is, a, is it, this is an important step, knowing how the competitors are um, designing or are uh, selling the, their, their vehicles. Okay, so at this point, I will show you an example that can summarize the, the target setting of, of the vehicle. In this case, I take again the example of the minibus, the electric minibus uh, designed for Barcelona, for Barcelona, by the for the fleet operator. We started with with the requirements. So here, the um, the operator asked uh, that the, the this this vehicle needs to satisfy the requirements, warranty to to shift. Um, maximum gradivity set up to 18%. Maximum speed, so this is, will be an urban vehicle, 55 kilometers per hour. The acceleration from null to a maximum speed in 16 seconds. And um, a characteristic that is not uh, available for this, this, this type of vehicle if the creation of low entry for disabled people. So this was a challenge for us for, for the battery distribution because we cannot um, put the vehicles on the um, on the vehicle's floor. We have to we, we had to find another place to fit all the battery pack. Okay, so the first part was to look to have a, a market benchmark to look to the competitors. At the moment that we develop this, this vehicle. There, there was no, no, not too much vehicles in Europe. So we have a research uh, at worldwide level. So to knowing uh, on other parts of the world, what, type, what types of electrical minibuses are were developing. In this case, uh, we have uh, different uh, parameters to have a, a, comp a comparison. We take the, the dimension, uh, we, we look the, the weight, the range, the speed, the slope, and the battery capacity. Basically, we, we wanted to have a, a reference and to check that the, 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 our parameters or, the, or the, our specification was according to the, other, to the other markets. And if they are different, uh, have an, a correct answer to, to justify the difference between these actual vehicles and with our vehicle. Then, uh, remember, the, op the fit operator wanted that the vehicle was, uh, kept, was able uh, to perform two shift. In this case, we, we had to, to define what, what was two shift. In this case, the, ve the vehicle, the vehicle cap battery capacity um, must have the, the, the ability to, to go from the bus depot, then working for 16 hours and then go back to the depot but normally we when we talk about the, the range we talk the range in kilometers but in this case we have hours so our challenge was to translate the the hour requirement to a distance requirement because maybe 16 hours operation can be a big number but in kilometers it's no longer 
So on this uh, time operation, we had to add uh, that, that these two distance that are important to the, to the range calculation of the battery capacity. Also, uh, it's important to know where is the, 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 the bus garage, maybe because in some cases you can, you can have um, um, a bus depot that is uh, near uh, sea level and you have to, to perform your, your services at top of the mountain. So this is a problem because you, you start the day with uh, the full charge uh, vehicle with full charge battery inside the vehicle, and you cannot um, and you cannot uh, take advantage of the difference of, of a slope at the beginning of the day. But at the end, yes, you can you can um, you can assume that at the end of the day, the date you you can uh, recharge or you can um, yeah you can recharge some some amount of energy. But if if is uh, the situation is, is different that we have the bus depot on the top of the mountain, and which and we start the the line uh, near the sea, um, that we we cannot um, take advantage of this different slope, and this is um, a point to take into account because at the end of the day the battery will be discharged, and the traction requirements will be higher to due to the to the slope difference. So it's important to analyze uh, this situation. And then, uh, why is important to know to change to, to translate the, the 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 autonomy in kilometers and the autonomy in hours? Because electric vehicles um, has a, a disadvantage that uh, the electric the, the battery of the vehicle also fits the the, ele the electrical system so we have to to know or to we have to characterize the the different uh, electrical con consumptions con or con um, consumers so for example we have to to know that the the, the the traction system the the cooling system how how much energy it needs and uh, the age back so the um, the temperature inside the, the vehicle must be a conditioned, so it's important to know that uh, how much energy consumed the, the air conditioner or the heaters, pneumatic system, and other auxiliaries such as the, the wheelchair ram or the, the basic uh, electric auxiliaries like the lights, the radio, etc. And to this consumption, we have to add another um, another problem is that is the, the weight of the vehicle. So the vehicle uh, have uh, to perform all these uh, 16 hours of operation with an um, with an ideal uh, climatic um, situation. So we have uh, an, an important consumption energy consumption for these auxiliaries, and the vehicle have the vehicle must be able to transport the, um, the maximum amount of people. In this case, the vehicle was suitable for 22 people and translated into weight. So we have to weigh, uh, add a load of 2,000 kilograms. We calculated that at the end of the day, uh, only 53 kilowatts hour of energy consumption were related to the electrical consumption. To this consumption, we have to add the traction consumption. <clears throat> so this uh, this was uh, the situation. Um, we have uh, the, um, the target of, of a speed. We have a target of, of a range, and we have a target of a slope. With this, with, with th these three targets, we were able to define motor characteristics and battery characteristics that they are they are more or less dependent on the speed and on the range but the battery affects on the backup packaging so more 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 battery capacity more space that is just dedicated to the more room space dedicated to the, to the battery and more battery implies more vehicle weight more vehicle weight implies a low range, low speed, 
and low performance uh, to achieve the, 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 the slope gradient. So all, all of these parameters uh, must, meet the, must meet the market solutions, but maybe these market solutions may imply a cost. So this is a, a problem for the um, for the vehicle manufacturers because they they have to to meet some some requirements. Normally, our our input for a vehicle development implies to know the the battery range, the motor characteristics, the vehicle weight, and the auxiliary consumption, and all of these parameters from the components. We can perform a calculation and we can uh, know the the outputs. The outputs in here, in this case, are the performance. So we know that the, the range, we know the maximum speed, we know the acceleration, we know the, the slope capabilities, and the, um, the load capacity. But this, uh, this is a loop because we wanted to, to achieve these outputs, we have to change these inputs. And then changing the, the, the components can change the performance. So, in Ideado, uh, we developed a, a tool a few years ago that um, asking for the, the performance results or the performance uh, or, the, or the targets, we can define the desired uh, component characteristics. So, in this case, defining the, the vehicle range, the vehicle speed, the vehicle acceleration, the sub capabilities, and the, and the load capacity, we can define the component specification and this is an example of, of, of this tool tomorrow you will see uh, this uh, the, the, the calculations behind this tool so uh, this tool uh, the results um, so the, the different calculations uh, meet the requirements of this feasible uh, region so introducing the range, the speed, the acceleration, the slope, and the, and the load capacity, and knowing the vehicle weight, we can define a, a, a battery volume. So, taking the, the requirements from the, the fleet operator, uh, the, the, the vehicle range, the vehicle speed, the acceleration, the slope capability, and the load, we were able to define the battery capacity, in this case, the, the battery volume. One of, of the other parameters that this uh, tool needs is the battery characteristics. So the energy, uh, battery, so the density, the density, etc. Et so in this case, we, we could define a battery volume of 1,250 kiloliters uh, with a with a base vehicle mass of 4,500 kilograms. Also, the tool. Um, give us some some performance that the the the, um, the will the force on the wheel necessary to to move the vehicle the the desired uh, continuous power from the motor the motor uh, the motor corner power this is an interesting uh, parameter that will that you will be uh, that you will know tomorrow and the battery capacity how much energy i need to, to satisfy the, the the 16 hours operation plus the, the distance between the, the first stop and the last stop of, of the line. So the summary of, of this um, of this workshop. We have a business model. And with this business model, we have to, to define the, the, our product and it applies to define the use case definition and the vehicle targets. With the business model and these, these targets, we can define the use case definition. We have a, we have to perform a deep study of the of the use case. We have to analyze the route, and with these two parameters, we can define the vehicle requirements. With these two requirements, we can we can perform the target setting of the vehicle. From so, this target setting can be adjust or can be or can be um, the result from the business model and from the use case analysis. And here we have to define our desired performance. And finally, it's important to have a benchmarking of the of the market in order to to position to positionize our product um, 
raise it from, from, from the market side and take uh, analyze the strengths and the weakness of, the, of, the, of, of our product and take a final de de uh, decision of, of our final targets on, and that affects our final uh, business model. Okay, so for tomorrow, we plan uh, homework. We want it uh, that you can define that think in about an uh, um, in think about in an electric vehicle that you want to build. So you have to define the exact targets. So please uh, take note because tomorrow you we will work with these these targets. So you have to think in about the use case. So you have to define a route, for example, from from your home to to your work or from your home to your school. Define the length. Define a, if your vehicle want to do a circular circular route, and think uh, how you you can record the, this route. How you can take the information about the speed profile and the height profile. And then regarding to the vehicle, think on the on the range. Think on the maximum gradivity that you wanted to the gravity capability of, of your vehicle, the maximum speed, the acceleration time from null to a desired speed, and think about the auxiliary consumption. Thinking that you are taking a, an electric vehicle and all the consumption, all the consumers uh, will be fitted by your battery. So the, the lights, the stereo system, if you want to recharge your, your mobile, if you have if you have some infotainment uh, system, or if you want to of you if you define a cargo a van a cargo van vehicle, what kind of auxiliaries can can require this this vehicle? So I leave one minute to take notes from from this homework, and then we will see you tomorrow. Okay. Mm. Okay, and this is uh, our reference, and thank you for your attention. If you have any doubts or any questions, you can write your questions on the on the question chat. Okay, so thank you for your attention and we will see you tomorrow with a second part of, of this training. Thank you and good afternoon.